Hey, everybody, it's Mike Myers and Richard Chapman, your two favorite bald nerds ever in the entire world. Bringing, once again, another exciting episode. Today, we're doing Endpoint Detection and Response. Is that right, Richard? EDR, yes, sir. EDR, that sounds like some kind of music. Wait, that's EDM, never mind. That's EDM. It's close. It's so, <laughs> I, I, I frequently listen to EDM while I'm working in the EDR, so that works. Total sidebar, have you ever been on Ishker's Guide to Electronic Music? No, I have not. When you get a chance, when you when you want to kill five hours of your life, <laughs> go on to uh, ISH Ishkar Ishkar Ishkar's Guide to Electronic Music. It is incredible, and you will waste five hours of your life. But let's get back to EDR because that's the important thing. But before we talk about EDR, what is I on your shirt? I see bird. What do you got going there, brother? It's a blackbird. It's an SR seventy one. Ah, you sure I it's not this, an eight? I, I wore a, this just for you today. Let me let me see it one more time, because so many times people put up SR-71s, and it's actually the uh, uh, A-12, which is the... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I, I love SR-71s. Uh, have you, the best one in the world, in my opinion, is up in Seattle, Washington, at the, uh, I think it's the Boeing Museum or what it's called. That's the one that has the D-21 drone on top. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? I do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, absolutely incredible. And have you ever heard uh, the wonderful, uh, if you get a chance, get on YouTube and do a search for LA speed check. Okay. And it's these SR 71 pilots who are flying near Los Angeles. And there's like a little Cessna. The Cessna's like, uh, we need to check our speed. And the, uh, the, the guy in the tower is like, uh, you're flying at uh, 120 knots. That's one, two, zero knots. And then some guy in like a Piper Cherokee or some hot prop plate, he's like, uh, he's trying to show off, right? I need a speed check too. And he goes, oh, we got you at 240 knots. That's 240 knots. And then some fighter jock, like in an F-18 in the Navy, he wants to show off. And he's like, uh, can I get a speed check? And he's like, oh, we got you at 600 knots. That's 600 knots on the ground. And of course, the SR-71s are Air Force, right? So they hate right. the Navy. And they're like... <clears throat> Uh, we need a speed check in the, uh, we have you at 1,900 knots. That's one nine. The guy's like, uh, thank you, sir. We thought we were a little closer to 2,000. Anyway, I can't do it half as good. If you get a chance, do a YouTube search for LA speed check. It's absolutely hilarious video. So much fun. I love the fact that you're an aviation nut like me, Richard. I mean, you know, I, I tease you about being good looking all the time, but the fact that you're into technology. I, I, I love it. Where did this come from? So my dad was Air Force. And as a kid, you couldn't help but grow up wanting to be a pilot. My dad uh, worked on ejection seats in airplanes. So Very cool, man. Now, of course, I've got the Navy tradition on my side, but, you know, and one brother who joined the Army for some reason. I don't, still trying to figure <laughs> that one out. There's always one that's special in the family. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to offend my Army friends. <laughs> He drove the Humvee. Um, all right. So anyway, let, let's get into EDR. You know, Richard, one of the things I've loved now, it's hard to believe that it's been almost a year uh, since I've become part of the National Cyber Group family and started working with CyberNow Labs. And I am still in such a sharp growth curve of knowledge. And uh, so for me, it, I know we keep doing this, but I want to repeat it one more time. I have to think about security more from a Soho universe. And then that helps me as you guide me to the big enterprise world. So what I don't even really understand what EDR is. Can you give me a SOHO analogy to kind of get me going in the right direction here? So EDR, which stands for Endpoint Detection and Response, in essence is a beefed up antivirus, anti-malware application that is installed on endpoints in an enterprise environment. And you know, I, I you know I joked last time last time you and I talked, we you talked about Udvar Hazy and the and uh, the planes there. And again, the Blackbird's one of my favorite planes. You know, this plane is is was designed for surveillance, right? It was it was designed for high altitude surveillance. And what it's doing is when it saw activities that it deemed important, it took pictures, it took snapshots. It caught things in the act. That's what an EDR does, except it's doing it on laptops, desktops, servers, you name it. 
So, so this is definitely where enterprise level anti malware comes into play. Yeah, and we've talked about that a little bit in the past. We even looked a little bit at EDR uh, in the past as well. But you know, I think I think we'll probably end up getting a little bit more in depth. But at the moment, you know, we're just going to kind of lead into it here, right? Just kind of yeah. So what, yeah, what I'm hoping for in this episode is let, just help me wrap my head around it. I, I don't necessarily need the ten thousand foot, but I'd like a five thousand foot view. And then maybe we'll do another episode where we actually dig deeply into the tools. But this time, let's get the clouds and bubbles taken care of so that mm -hmm. I, I feel a little bit more strongly about this. So first of all, does EDR replace traditional desktop anti-malware tools? It generally does, yes. All right. And uh, does is EDR also part of intrusion detection at all, or is that a separate tool set? That's a separate tool. That's usually going to be handled by your firewall. Okay. And uh, additionally, is that most email stuff, you know, uh, like my anti-malware tools will actually go through my email mm -hmm. and uh, I do have to download the email. So if I set up uh, IMAP, for example, it's going to go through and look at it uh, and it does some heuristics, some signature based stuff. But that's not true in an enterprise. In general, in an enterprise, you have a completely separate email tool, which we've already gone through, right? Correct. All right, so I, I, I've got to get this wrapped out a, a little bit more in my head. Okay, what else does EDR do other than anti-malware, or is that its big job? That really is its big job, but it is also looking at activities that aren't necessarily malware. Um, they're, they're activities that are carried out on an endpoint utilizing the applications and the processes that are already on the system, so native Windows processes, um, they, they, there really is no signature there that identifies as malicious because it's a native application, it's a native process that runs on the computer. So, but then again, you know, Windows, let's use Windows because that's kind of my superpower land. Yeah. So with Windows tools, you know, um, most of the primary uh, uh, executables are signed, right? Mm -hmm. yep. uh, does EDR deal with that or is that left more to the individual systems. Yeah, so signed processes obviously is a part of the reporting information that you do get uh, from the EDR. It'll notify you if the file that you're looking at that's in question is a signed file. And for the most part, a signed file will a lot of times indicate that it's a good file. But again, you know, I, I use this, uh, this kind of analogy with my analysts. Um, you know, it's like a hammer. And, and I keep a hammer on my desk literally for this uh, explanation. You know, this hammer is a tool that's used across the globe every single day. It's a legitimate tool, right? It doesn't have a signature that says, hi, I'm a bad thing. But if somebody with bad intentions gets this in their hand, then all of a sudden that hammer becomes a, a weapon. And that's kind of the same, same mentality. So sometimes those signed files, they can be doing malicious activity because of the way that they're being utilized. Okay, so the last question for EDR for me before we start breaking it down a little bit is, what about, uh, I'm sticking with Windows here, okay? Yeah. So, um, well, we're talking about Windows security, uh, auditing tools and such like that, uh, log on, log off, stuff like that. Uh, does EDR tend to fit under that umbrella as well? It, it can because some of those different activities can actually show up as persistence or lateral type movement behavior. And they can trigger you know, EDR alerts depending on the rules and depending on the threat intelligence. A lot of times it's what it's connected to as well you know, what process is carrying out those activities. But, you know, traditional logons and log offs are generally going to be uh, something that you're uh, monitoring in your SIM tool. Uh, you're actually yeah. you're you're actually looking at the logs coming from that Windows machine and you're looking at those Windows event codes. You're looking at 4624s, 4625s, 4634s, things like that. And 3624, 36s, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. 46, I don't know 40, what those 80, numbers 80. are, man. I know when we get to sim, you're going to teach me that stuff. But uh, uh, okay, so that's great. So this really is helpful for me, Richard, to kind of start separating the major classes of enterprise level tool sets. So thank you for putting up with my slightly silly question. So oh. let's let's touch on the engineering a little bit of, of EDR. Um, how does it look? I mean, I'm sure there's lots of variations, but in general, simplistically, uh, you say the word agents, for example. Does my Windows system have a run? It's running a little 
piece of code, some kind of agent that is supporting some larger EDR solution? That's exactly right. So basically there's a small application. It's a, it's a process that's associated with uh, the EDR uh, tool and that agent gets installed on that endpoint and that agent communicates with the management console. So it's actually sending information back and forth to the management console, specifically, of course, when you have uh, a, a, you know, an, uh, a detection. So. Okay, so uh, what about non-traditional uh, endpoints like uh, cameras or printers or stuff like that? Does, does EDR come into play there? Not generally, no, um, unfortunately. In those cases, um, you know, having a good gap management program where you've got, you know, maybe IoT vulnerability scanning capabilities through like an application uh, like Armis that can really uh, map the network and find uh, IoT devices on the, on, the, on the environment itself. And then making sure that those devices are patched or updated. Um, those, that's, really, that's really where you're going to be able to close right, that I, up. I got you. Okay, so... When we're talking about EDR, we're going to be talking about desktop solutions, Windows, Mac, Linux, mm -hmm. uh, obviously. Servers. Laptop. I'm Servers. sorry? Servers. Servers. Uh, what about smart devices, tablets and phones? Does this fit under uh, EDR? It's possible. If you, have, if you have the ability to install an agent, if there is an agent uh, for those devices, then yeah, you can, you can absolutely install them as well. Okay. But the fact that you're, because of your great experience here and you're saying, well, you can, yeah. Here's what I'm actually hearing. I go, but I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? So no. Well, if you have a work phone, there's there's going to be some things that can possibly be done in that case. Um, a, a lot of SOC operations they don't even allow smartphones into the SOC itself uh, because potentially it's an issue. Um, and depending on what solutions they have, they may or may not have a, a solution that can actually solve an issue with a phone that connects to the Wi-Fi in the office. So yeah, I've actually seen that working with the. United States federal agencies with three letters and guns and badges yep. is uh, they have skiffs, which, you know, is yep. a pretty generic term. And uh, you can't even bring a thumb drive in there. Yeah, uh, you can't have a, a watch with it. That's a smart uh, smart watch either. Yeah, so, they learned that the hard way, didn't they? Yeah, well, you hear the stories about this where that's that's I, usually I how it happens. They learn the hard way. <laughs> it wasn't necessarily in skiffs, but it was in other type of more secure facilities and you know, these tend to be guys who are trying to, guys and gals who are trying to stay in shape. So they're punching yeah. in like their runs and all this, map my run. And, and it was kind of like, here's free information about uh, Quantico uh, or whatever it might be. Uh, now that, they fixed that years ago, but uh, I do remember that happening. All right. So I've got to Thank you for getting me started, at least in terms of understanding uh, what EDR does. And, and so the big thing here is that uh, what depending on your EDR solution, you're going to be installing agents onto your Windows, Linux, and Mac devices. Is that fair? Am I missing any other That's operating good. systems? All right. So I install these agents, and uh, all of these agents phone home. Uh, do EDR solutions manifest uh, as a, a a physical device for gathering data, or is it usually a you have a, a Windows server that you run some EDR software on that is the primary gathering tool? Actually, a lot of the management consoles are actually in the cloud, uh, but you can, well, sure. you can you can have on-prem uh, servers set up with the management console as well. Okay. All right. Well, cool. All right. Well, this is a great start then. So can you name some of the players? And I look, I know we're going to have another episode where we're really going to dig deep, but yeah. could you take a moment and just give us a couple of just quick screen snaps? I don't care. Name a couple of the players or three or four of the players or one player. Uh, in the EDR world, and then can you just throw some of your opinion in there as well? Yeah, so first off, in our environment here at CyberNow Labs, we actually uh, train analysts and analysts work in EDR investigations on CrowdStrike and Sentinel-1. Um, those are two of the leading EDR solutions in the Gartner Quadrant, so they're, they're, they're up at the top. They're absolutely one and two. Um, there's a ton of other companies out there that actually have EDR. Uh, Microsoft Defender is actually a big one uh, for enterprise. It's growing. Really? Uh, Trend Micro is, is actually a big one. And no, I'm not talking about the Defender that's installed on your, yeah. This is a, a much more beefy. They have, a, they have an entire suite of applications for email security and so forth as well, too. So uh, their Sentinel products are pretty, pretty solid, actually. They're getting better. So, um, but yeah, Trend Micro, FireEye. FireEye is kind of falling down. Carbon Black is another one. There's, there's a ton. So CloudStrike, guy, I hate to show my ignorance. You know, sometimes you go to a website 
and it stalls there for a minute. Yeah. Is that CloudStrike or something else? No, no, no. So our, the application is crowd, like like a big crowd of people. Crowd crowd strike. Strike. You're probably thinking of like, I don't know, Cloudfair? What are you talking? What are you thinking about? I can't think of the name. We're gonna have 10,000 people out there. Mike, it's called da 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 da. Cloudflare? Cloud hey, 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 we're old bald guys. We do forget things sometimes. I'm That's not okay. wearing any pants. <laughs> don't stand up. Yeah, no, you don't. Like that. <laughs> I heard a story about that actually the other day. Something something happened where somebody was on camera and totally forgot that they were on camera and stood up and didn't have any pants on. Oh, dude, there's complete subreddits on that, you know, where people mess up or, you know, somebody sit there, oh, we're at a board meeting, then somebody naked walks across the background. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, put if, clothes if, on. If it's slightly controversial, head over to Reddit, find the subreddit for it. They go, I always got yeah, you. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, if you were to pick a tool, yeah. what what EDR solution is your favorite screwdriver? To be honest, I actually really like CrowdStrike. Um, I enjoyed working in Carbon Black, although Carbon Black is kind of they're they're kind, they've kind of fallen down that Gartner uh, Magic Quadrant quite a bit. I'm not sure if they just haven't kept up as much, but. Uh, yeah, CrowdStrike definitely is one of my favorites. All right, so I know we're gonna, uh, I know we're gonna have a whole episode on the on these tools, but can we wrap up real quick and just give us a quick peek? Do you have CrowdStrike available where we can just take a quick look at it? Yeah, I do actually. I have, uh, I actually have CrowdStrike and Sentinel One both open on my machine here. Let me. Uh, and again, share. just a, just a quick peek, Richard. Don't don't go nuts. Oh man, but I like to go nuts. Come on. Well, we'll I'll, we'll do a whole episode on this. Okay. Ooh. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I didn't. Why are you putting your phone number up there? What? I'm kidding. I'm phone kidding. Number. I'm kidding. What? 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 No. Okay. <laughs> Made you look. Made you look. <laughs> you freaked me out for a second. I was like, wait a minute. Did I share the wrong All right. Screen? So this here, I can almost, because, you know, the email tool, it seems to me that most of these sock type tools manifest as like spreadsheets where you have individual lines of what do you call it here? Which each line is a incident? So in here, these are actually referred to as alerts. You have alerts and alerts. threats. So okay. These are alerts. Yeah, primary. And oh, it then says, crowd, it's a, it says in crowd strike, you're looking at detections. So, all right, but we'll, but this seems to be a common motif on so many of these tools, Richard, there where it's, uh, well, we certainly saw this with email when we did that, where you had yep. individual threats or incidents or cheeseburgers or whatever you want to call each one of these things. And again, I don't want to dig deep. I want everybody to get interested. So when uh, they're, they're going to want to watch the episode where we dig deep. But at, Listen, at, my, at the end of the day, there's only so many ways that you can say, here's an alert, here's another alert, here's another alert, right? I mean, it, a list like this, like in the spreadsheet is really all you kind of need. And then once you dive in, then it expands into a whole new world. So dude, I don't I, I I I'm always learning something new with you. I was waiting for you to put on your VR goggles and you know drop us into a world where we're you know shooting uh uh threats like uh zomb I'm sorry I've been watching The Last of Us. I'm really into that right now. And yeah. uh you know with an AR so I don't know I just trying to figure this out. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, let's leave this as a teaser Richard. Can we Take a look at uh, what was the other one you had? CrowdStrike. So this this is the dashboard, and you get to the detections by clicking on new detections, and then you see something similar, basically a, a spreadsheet kind of list where <laughs> you've got the detections and you know the severity and so forth. So yeah, pretty cool. pretty right. straightforward. Cool. Well, thank you for the teaser. We'll definitely. Uh, uh, here, just, there we go. That that's right. I I. I, uh, I I'm it is much... just a teaser. It is just, but I tell you, EDR is one of my favorite things to do. Um, I love digging into EDR, and I know a lot of other people do too. So it's it's definitely fun. It's intriguing. Well, let's go ahead and uh, let everybody know, folks. If if you enjoyed, I hope this get you guys to a stronger understanding conceptually of what EDR is, and I hope you'll join us here uh, and watch our detailed episode where we go into actually digging into, I'm sorry, CloudStrike and CrowdStrike and Sentinel One. Sentinel One, my goodness. So many <laughs> different things. It's amazing. Ah. Uh, but, um, and, and I hope you guys will join us. Do keep in mind, uh, these are the tools that are used at CyberNow Labs because these are the best of show tools that are used in most, should I say all? It's dangerous to say all, right? Uh, most many, of the many most yeah <laughs> some a lot 
holy smoke, uh, different smoke. stocks. And, and what's important at CyberNow Labs is, you know, we dig you into these tools. You're going to be working in a real sock. You, you will be working with an instructor or with a mentor who's going to help you understand these tools and uh, because that's what employers are looking for. And, uh, and, and that's really what we're all about here at CyberDow Labs. So other than that, Richard, did I, did I wrap this up good? I think for the most part, other than, hey, if you like what we the content we provide, make sure you're liking, subscribing, sharing, following us. We're trying to, to share good content and also have a little bit of fun and uh, entertain you as well. So. Absolutely. So uh, watch for any links. If you want to be checking out, do keep in mind, uh, we have our info sessions. Uh, usually twice a week, we have an info session. Uh, there's probably a link around here somewhere. <laughs> that uh, I bet you somebody can make it pop up right above your head or yeah, there's a you. boomer right across my face anything to get my <laughs> ugly mug out of there but do check out these info sessions they're obviously they're completely free uh, uh but they really give you an opportunity to really understand how cyber now labs works how 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 our program actually gets you from zero to 100 in, in an extremely short amount of time it's a 20-week program absolutely amazing and uh uh, do check that out. If if you like uh, what we talk about here in Two Bald Nerds, uh, look for our playlist. Uh, we've been doing this now for a while, and we've got uh, building quite the library, I might say, Richard, quite the library yep. uh, of, of great products that really helps you understand uh, not only the technology that's going into cybersecurity, concentrating on uh, on security operations centers, but we also have a little bit of fun and uh, might even help your love life. We have a lot of bit of fun. And yes, love love life can be improved by watching Two Bald Nerds. <laughs> that was fun back in February when we did that, when I had the biggest kick out of that. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining Two Bald Nerds. We'll see you on the next episode. Until then, this is Mike Myers. And this is Richard Chapman. See you later. If you like Two Bald Nerds, check out our entire playlist right here. It's a lot of fun. We'll see you there.